Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with a review of the fat man names in the daily and 60 minute time frames, along with the semiconductor ETF, uh, which is SMH. Uh, 8.25 in the morning on Tuesday, August 9th. Starting out with Meta here, uh, we had the big gap down uh, a ways back uh, early in the year, and it has uh, moved down in this uh, bullish falling wedge, but we are still down trapped in this basing area that runs from about 155 up to 172. You can see the uh, green line is the 50 EMA. I think that's, uh, you know, in order to get this thing even halfway going, you got to take out this base and move above the 50. That would open up this 182 level, which will be really big. Why? Support, support, support. All the volume over price resistance is above. So, yes, a breakout above the 50 would be bullish, but then you've got 182 looming as a uh, potential wall for uh, a wall of resistance there lying above. Uh, good news here uh, PPO momentum is rising as is RSI, but not dramatically. It hasn't broken above the 50 on the RSI and has not moved into the bullish regime on, uh, on PPO momentum. So still kind of dormant, uh, especially given the rally that's been going on lately, still in a basing mode. And I forgot to mention it. If you're new to the channel, please run the player at 1.5x. We'll speed things along a little bit. Uh, as we move down to the 60 minute time frame, uh, if any of your friends out there are TA skeptics, you can show them this uh, chart as a good example of what TA is all about in this basing range. Support, 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 support all along this line and resistance all along the top at 172 had the the big impulsive move out of the gate yesterday look where it stopped right at gap resistance at 176 and was rejected back down into this uh big trading range so if you're tactically trading What I mean by this setup here is it's kind of in no man's land, if you will. Um, you've got some support down here at 165, but really uh, you need to uh, break above 172 to open up 176. And then a move into the gap would uh, open up. I think the 50 has moved down. So uh, check the 50 on that. I did this quite a while ago and didn't change it off of the daily chart. So anyways, a move above 176 would open up for this gap fill up towards uh, 182. And remember, that's where all of the uh, big resistance lies on the, uh, on the daily chart. So if I were tactically trading and, you know, I took it long here at 172, or at 176, I would be certainly taking some profits on that gap fill up to 183, or if it pushes up towards, you know, 184, uh, I would expect a reaction there uh, at a minimum. So if you're tactically trading that for the gap fill, then make sure you take some profits there. Moving on to Apple. Uh, really dynamic move off of the lows, uh, more or less leading the market. I mean, I haven't checked that uh, numerically, but really nice bounce 
well above the 200, well above all the moving averages. I've scratched in a trend line here off of the lows, and that's certainly a good benchmark reference point as this thing tries to grind higher. Keep in mind, this whole move has been uncorrected. You know, there, there hasn't been, I mean, look at it, one red candle, two red candles, one red candle. I mean, that's nothing. I wouldn't, you, you know, you wouldn't be shocked for this thing to pull back to the 20 or even the 200 to find support. Not saying that's going to happen, but you've got PPO momentum starting to flatten and you've got uh, RSI up towards 70 towards overbought. Those are not reasons to get out of the trade. If you're long, I would stay long and I would have two key levels on the downside in mind. One, a break of the uptrend line. Two, uh, a move below the eight. The pink is the eight EMA. And then a break above, uh, excuse me, a break below 161 would open up this little gap and then you'd have a move down to the 20. So if you're long, I'd stay long, uh, know your levels, but I mean, strong, strong chart. Let's look at the, let's look at the 60 minute chart and you can see this beautiful uptrend channel that's been in place on the 60 minute chart uh, for quite a long time. You can see PPO momentum clearly in the bullish regime, RSI clearly in the bullish regime, although kind of testing 50. Um, and you've got some nice levels to play with on the 60 minute chart. Number one being 164. You can see a line of support across the bottom here at 164. If you lost to 164, I think you'd go to 162 pretty quickly, but then you'd be at the midpoint of the channel and you can see uh, that was support here last time. Uh, you can see along this line, it was resistance, then support. That's what you often see in a nice channel. If you were to break the midpoint of that channel, then I would assume you'd go down here to the bottom of the channel and at the top of this gap. And if you got that, uh, that would be a place to see, you know, if it held, try to get along there. If the rally continues, you know, move back up to the top of the box. And how it works is, or you're trading, keep doing what's working until it doesn't, for instance by the bottom of the channel, top of the channel, by the bottom of the channel, sell the top of the channel, by the bottom of the channel, up to the top, will eventually come down to the bottom. And the assumption is it's going to hold. And that's your objective entry. If it doesn't, then you quickly exit your position with a manageable loss. That's about all you can do at that point. So Apple still looks uh, relatively strong in this market. Tesla daily chart. I did not put it in here. You know, the whole uh, FIB retracement, but I did put it on there that this came up to the 618 FIB retracement level. You can see that price got rejected there uh, the other day. What was that? Uh, that would have been Thursday, uh, Friday, down day. And then yesterday made another little run, but came back. I've got a little band of support here between 862.50 and 890. Uh, price above the 200 the 20 and the 50. If I were long, I'd be careful uh, breaking below 
160 or excuse me 862.50 that would probably bring the 200 into play and the 20 uh, if I didn't have a position I think if it came down here towards the bottom of this zone you can be a buyer there with a stop below or you can wait for this uh, breakout above 890 and then shoot for 935 up at the prior high. And, you know, if you've been involved in Tesla or any stock, remember, look left for structure and the same levels will come up again and again and again. I mean, you know, back in here, every other day we were talking about 935 as being a level. And then we were talking about uh, 1000 being a level when it was back in this uh, trading range. So now on the way back up, all those levels become, of course, resistance. So the, uh, the key to it is once you get your levels established, as you go out in time, those levels will again become important as uh, direction on price changes. Now on the 60 minute chart, you can see we went up to this 935 level, have come back to 860. I've got a trend line off of these lows, which gives you a beautiful reference point for a potential long if price were to come back the assumption is that this trend line is going to hold. And if it doesn't, really, you've got a big level of support here down in the <clears throat> uh, 810 to 825 range on this big volume over price bar. So I think it's important, <clears throat> not mission critical, but I would like to see 860 hold the day. If not, you would break below the prior low, and then you'd probably go right down to this trend line for a little test. Microsoft, really interesting setup. We've got a big downtrend line off of the highs. We picked, picked off a point here, and now we had a point here validating that line. Um, price above all the moving averages, that's bullish, above the 200, that's bullish, but rejected at trend line resistance. So now, in order to make further progress, we need the big breakout. And so remember, when you've got a, you know, a big downtrend line in place, just let's envision out the future. You know, we came down, we came back to trend. And if it rolls over here, you know, in two months or in two weeks, you would conclude, yeah, it was just a kickback rally to trend where it got rejected, where the, ste where the sellers stepped in. Now, if it breaks out here, let's look ahead. If you remember just like we talked about on Tesla. If you've been involved in Microsoft, we talked about this 290 for literally weeks. Uh, rejection, 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 support back here. So we need to get 285 would open up a move to 290 in the whole scope of things that is not you know, not some major move, $5 on a $300 stock. That would, that to me is the critical level. Yes, 285 breakout is important. You'd be above trend. But then to really, you know, triple green light kind of thing is a break above 290 and all this resistance. Come up, fill this gap and then go on to 305 which was a huge level back in the day as well. So 
that's the way it goes on uh, moves back up. You've got overhead resistance all along the way, but it all starts with taking out this downtrend line. Now on the downside, I wouldn't want to see uh, the 200 and the 8-day fail. That would almost guarantee a move down to the 50 along this line here, down towards 270, and then you've got an uptrend line here to take a look at as well if it uh, makes it down that far. Uh, really clean look here on the 60-minute chart. You can see here uh, we've got a high volume over price level on this move up towards this way. We're down at that support level now. Uh, I want to see that hold. If that holds, that would give you a nice little, you know, intraday tactical long. See if it can get back up to 285. And remember, that's that big downtrend line comes in right at 285 where this got uh, rejected yesterday. So I think today, uh, 279 is your pivot below would probably open up the door down to 274. And keep in mind, if price rolls over, you've got a void in the chart that could see 270, 268 if this thing, you know, starts to roll downhill. But it all starts with 279 here today. Does it hold? Does it break? And uh, that is your pivot point here for today. Amazon, I did not even look. I haven't had a chance to. Maybe one of you guys can let me know. Um, uh, I was out last week, so there was a big gap up. I don't know if there was news or whatever. But we had this existing gap from back here. So we gapped up and we moved right up to the top of this gap. What I've done here on the daily chart is simply use the 200 as the pivot at 138.75. If you're on the daily time frame, I would stay long against the 200. And, uh, you know, if it loses the 200, you're probably going to come back to 135 rather quickly uh, to test the eight day. Let's look at the 60 minute chart. Uh, really nice look here. Here's your here's your 200. And remember, we just talked about it at 138.75. If you break that, you've got a little gap here, two dollars, 136 to 134, and then you've got this bigger gap, uh, ten dollar gap from 122 up to 132, and then. Uh, on the high side, you're going to have resistance here at 143.50, which was the high from yesterday. If it can hold this level here, there's uh, uh, a path higher up towards this 149.150 area. Um, but while you're going through your charts, I would certainly have this big gap alarmed at you know 132.50 wherever you want to get engaged because that's going to be a nice risk reward trade if if price rolls over and that gap is going to fill you know you'd have <clears throat> one or two dollars of risk versus a ten dollar move you know to fill the gap you know you got you got to take that short if you get that gap entry. I wanted to go back, uh, excuse me, wrong way, on Amazon Daily. This trading range between 148, 149, and 177 goes way, way back, you know, way before the split. I mean, this range was literally for almost a year. So when and if price 
gets up to that level, one, probably going to be a wall of resistance there from price memory. But if it breaks above, then remember what we say when you break back into an old trading range, the target becomes the far side. So even if you didn't do any of this and you get a break above 149, 150, you know, you can be long there and see if uh, the rally can extend and you get that technical measured move up to the top of the range. Uh, <clears throat> here's another great example of support and resistance while a stock is basing. I mean, going all the way back to May, look at the line of resistance. Look at the line of support. I mean, you know, plus or minus 15 cents. They all stopped on a dime and they all stopped on a dime on the way up. And even look at yesterday, little fake breakout, got up to 120 and then came right back and closed inside of this range. So on the upside, on any kind of breakout above the range, you got the 200 and then you got a big, big level at 126 support all this support support so then that becomes a big resistance level and <clears throat> just as we noted a second ago with um, uh, Amazon set yourself some alarms and even if you were to say you know what I don't want to get involved at one night you know, 118.50, you got the 200 right there, you know, blah, blah, blah. For whatever your reasoning is, I would certainly have an alarm at 126 because if it broke above that, it's got a lot of, run, a lot of technical running room. Why? Because you broke back above a major, major line of resistance and then that will become support. So your first entry will be on a break above the base. And remember that base is $12 wide from 106 to 118. So a break above would measure uh, $12. So that would take you to 130 on a measured move basis on that uh, breakout. Um, You can see here that here's that 118.50 big line of resistance. We had a fake breakout here, which resulted in a big, big rug pull. And that's what we got to be on guard for here, because just like in this instance, fake breakout back into the range, you really don't want to see that. So what Google knew, needs to do is um, quickly gather itself and not lose 116.50 because if you lose that level, which was support here and resistance here, then that opens up a door down to 114. And then, then this really would look like a fake breakout and then potentially even a move back down to the bottom of the box, which happened this time. So be careful there. Um, PPO still above the zero line, which keeps it positive. And same thing with RSI above the midpoint at 50, uh, but testing in both cases. So these would go negative or bearish on a move back below 116.50. Now, if you get a move down there this morning and it holds, then you'd have a nice tactical entry looking for a move back up to 118.50 and potentially even 120. Um, Netflix. Another prime example of 
TA predicting the move. Big gap down. Spent a long time, months, two and a half, three months, down in this $40 wide range from 165 to 205. We recently got the breakout, not only above the trading range, but above the declining 50 in uh, on the daily chart in green. And what were we saying? $40 wide uh, consolidation range. A breakout would give you a $40 move to the upside. And lo and behold, we're almost there. We got into the low 240s yesterday. The measured move target was 245 towards the bottom of this gap. So we are almost uh, there on Netflix. Pretty nice move. Doesn't look like much because the scale is compressed, but that was a nice uh, nearly $40 move on Netflix. I don't know if I've got the 60 minute. Yeah, I've got a nice trend line here on the 60. Uh, that you can use for reference. You can see in your, you know, in your technical analysis, you've got a nice ascending triangle with the flat side being at 227.50. You know, pressing, pressing, pressing. Finally got the breakout and a $10 move out of the gate yesterday. I actually got all the way up towards 242 before it backed off. Now, if you got a some weakness out of the gate today and it came down to 227.50, that's your objective buy. Why? Because you've got uh, trend line support and you've got all this volume overpriced support there as well. So... Uh, that is your objective long. Now, if things get wobbly and you lose 227.50, then that's your objective short. You break your trend line, come back into the prior range, you might come all the way back down here into, you know, 213 down in that area. So for Netflix, I think it's important to hold this 227.50 line. SMH, back in the day, remember the bear trap? Uh, I think we were short in here, got that move, and then on this candle, we said, you know, GTFO, get the, get the F out, because... It looked like a fake breakdown. And then we got the confirmation of that when it broke back in to this big down channel. And remember, just like we said on the trading ranges, you move outside the channel. Then when you move inside, you're back into the trading range. You treat channels just like you would horizontal trading ranges. Your technical measured move is the far side of the trading range, which is the top of the channel. So we had our eyes on first the midpoint. Then when we crossed this barrier at 217.50, we were looking above to the top of the channel, which we got. Not unusual after you've been away from the top of the channel for a long time and you come back into it, you often get a reaction just like we did here, right? Bottom of the channel, top of the channel, little fake breakout, back inside, found the bottom of the channel, found the top of the channel, rejected, bottom, bounce, fake move, top of the channel, and 
breakout. So today, I think 240 is your pivot and you've got the 200 EMA as resistance above right here at 244. That may pose a problem. Um, but above 247, 247.50, then this chart opens up. Notice back here a little void in the chart. I think you could get a fast move if you got above the 200 and can take out 247.50. I think you can get uh, towards 256, 257, and then possibly all the way up to 270 where you've got the big high volume over price bar resistance. On the downside, I think if you lose 240, you'll come back in to the 20 down here at 230. Let's look at the 60 minute chart. Yeah, see, here I've got this nice trend line off of the lows, and we were just talking about 237.50. You lose this trend line, your next support is at. 232.50 right here at this high, but then a more likely scenario, at least in my mind, would be coming back down to this high volume over price bar towards, you know, 228, 230 right in that area. So, um, I'll remind you that uh, we've got the CPI tomorrow. Uh, I would anticipate that be a market moving event. Um, so you should be mindful of your, you know, of your overnight risk because that's going to be pre-market. And, you know, I tend to be kind of a defensive trader. I don't want to be out, you know, up to my neck in longs or anything, uh, you know, ahead of that print. As I'm coming back from vacation, I haven't put on any, didn't do any trading yesterday. Don't anticipate doing any trading today. I'm still kind of in catch-up mode, getting in, uh, in the flow of the market. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, other than, you know, some little day trade or something like that, I don't want to put on a ton of risk heading into that CPI print tomorrow. If there's a moonshot, then I know how to buy. If there's a giant rug pull, then I'll be thankful that uh, I didn't rush out and put on a bunch of longs. So all I'm saying is just review your positions. Uh, be mindful of that overnight risk. And then We'll see what happens tomorrow. I have no idea, you know, what it could be, you know, uh, kind of an aside, you know, I didn't look at any Twitter or anything last, uh, in the last week, which was nice, but coming back to it, uh, it's the same old people saying the same old things, you know, this is it for the rally. Or the squeeze rolls on and there's more to go. The bottom is in. The top is in. You know, just go by the levels. Uh, you will know it when you see it. You, you see these trend lines start to break. Then you can do an attitude adjustment. Rather than, you know, I'm going to try and short. I'm going to try and short, you know, as the thing goes up. Trying to call a top. It's a losing trade. I've been there a million times. Just go by the levels, and that way you'll have real objective information to go by rather than, you know, trying to call tops and bottoms. Um, I've always found that to be frustrating and finally learned my lesson. So uh, keep that in mind. Hope, hope that, uh, I hope that helps you. So anyways, uh, that's where we're at on Fat Man and Semis. Um, I will keep in catch up mode and keep feeding you content as I catch up. 
This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Hope you have a good day and talk to you next time.